Tell me when you're ready. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let me just say that we are very grateful for the 50 plus uh, countries and groups that have uh, emphasized the centrality of uh, the Palestine question and uh, abiding by international law implementation of Security Council resolution, particularly 2334. Settlements uh, is illegal, main obstacle to peace, and it has to be stopped, and no alternative to the two-state solution and the maintenance of the status quo of Jerusalem until it is resolved through negotiation. And, uh, for example, the uh, speaker of groups, uh, and there were many speakers of groups, of the Arab group, of the OIC, of NAM, of the European Union, and in the European Union statement, there were very strong principles reiterated about the implementation of 2334, uh, about uh, uh, the position of all the member states of the European Union not accepting any changes of the borders uh, uh, of 1967, including uh, East Jerusalem, uh, until, un un unless there is something that agreed upon uh, by uh, the two parties through negotiation, and also to differentiate in the dealing uh, between the Israeli proper and the occupied uh, territory. Uh, all these principles, you know, uh, came out loud and clear uh, by many countries and groups, and we are grateful to them. And I think that uh, efforts to try to put aside the Palestine question uh, from any objective uh, observer to the debate I think the message is uh, loud and clear. Of course, we want the Security Council, as many have uh, stated, to uh, shoulder its responsibility to play uh, of an effective role in uh, ending the occupation, uh, the independence of the State of Palestine, and uh, the, def the implementation of the two-state solution, uh, and upholding international law and uh, I believe that uh, many speakers emphasize that the Security Council has a role to play and it should play it. And we are uh, uh, of the same opinion. And yet, at the same time, we are engaging uh, with uh, particularly the United States of America. Of course, we are engaging with all countries who are pushing for peace. As you see that we are engaged with the international community, with the Secretary General, with the the members of the Security Council to that objective. Our President will be coming, you know, to Washington, D.C. the beginning of May and will meet with President uh, Trump on the 3rd of May. We are engaging. Uh, our objective is to open uh, doors for a meaningful process uh, for peace that will lead to the end of occupation, the independence of our state, and the actualization of the two-state solution. I can tell you that we are satisfied from uh, this long debate, and if I am not mistaken, this is a record number of uh, countries participating in this debate. For those who were hoping that this debate to go away or to shrink, I think that the statement uh, of today was loud and clear that the international community is determined to be involved and after 50 years of occupation, they are more determined than ever to uh, see a just solution to the conflict on the basis of international law and Security Council resolutions and UN resolutions. This is what I wanted to share with you, and I thank you very much. debate between you and the Israeli ambassador uh, to, uh, and also what happened in the New York Times and so on, you know, the New York Times. Uh, I think the uh, occupying power and the representative of the occupying power is the least qualified to speak about the credential of a national hero. If we leave it up to racist South Africa, 
to question the credentials of Nelson Mandela when he defended himself in court and refused the legitimacy of the apartheid regime court, then we would say that he was what they characterized him to be. I think it took people many years to realize that Nelson Mandela is bigger than many things and he was a great figure in the struggle against apartheid. I believe that Marwan Barghouti is one of uh, the leaders of the Palestinian movement and the Israeli occupying legal system and the representative of Israel are the last people qualified to speak about justice uh, with regard to uh, those who fight for independence and liberation. Thank you. I heard recently Rima Khalaf being interviewed, and she said maybe member states will take this report up in some other format. Do you think that what, what's going to happen now that it came off the, the, the regional commission's website? Is there any future for the report? Am I understanding that there are thousands, maybe tens of thousands of copies being shared by those who want it, and it is on uh, the Internet? So in terms of accessibility and circulation of the report, it is in the hand of whoever wants it by just clicking a button on the computer. So... The issue of circulation is there, and those who tried to uh, suppress it um, made a big service for this report to become popular than maybe, uh, uh, in, uh, you know, at the beginning was not that popular. So I, it's possible that maybe there are hundreds of thousands of copies that have been circulated. Thank you. Uh, the, the family of Taylor Force, who was killed last year in a terrorist attack, uh, the family of the terrorist is getting paid money. What do you say to that? It seems that the Trump administration is going to raise payments to those who have killed uh, innocent citizens, including Taylor Force, an American. What do you say to the pay that families get paid to uh, the, 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 the survive the, those who have killed their families get money? I don't know exactly what uh, you're referring to, but if you're referring to uh, killing innocent civilians, our position is clear. We are against uh, killing innocent civilians from any side, uh, uh, and we do not accept any justification or basis for doing so. Uh, those who seek uh, going to courts to get money uh, in this regard, that is their choice, and I cannot comment on that. His family who is, is receiving who, who, Taylor Force, who is an Taylor American Force? who was killed in Jaffa last year, uh, March 8th. Yes. His, the family of the terrorist who killed him are receiving payments from the PA. What do you have to say about that? Listen, this issue is uh, that uh, it's now is in circulation for discussions. If you look at the families of Palestinian martyrs, that the great number of them are killed by the Israeli forces. That when, for example, Robin Stein in uh, uh, Al-Khalil Hebron, he goes to the mosque and murders 27 Palestinian worshippers and injures dozens of them. And the Palestinian Authority, as a responsible party, help the families of those who are killed. Who is the terrorist in this case? and that there are so many cases, or the family of the uh, Palestinian uh, individual that was killed in cold blood by Israeli soldier in Hebron after he injured him, and we all saw in television that he, a bullet went through his head, and helping the family of that individual. Who is the killer and who is the terrorist? No, I'm, I'm just telling you that this issue, you cannot uh, cherry pick one case here or one case there, that there are, you know, a large number of Palestinians who are receiving uh, compensation. They are victims of Israeli terrorism or killed by Israeli soldiers. Thank you. An American is not a victim. 